Um, no dead air. <laughs> well, I'm trying to figure out, um, I forgot to write down the quote. Introduce myself, but it's just you and Casey here. You guys both know who I am. I'm Gopher. So like you want me, do you want me to start introducing myself now, even though nobody's here? Okay, well, I'm Gopher. We are uh, starting a hopefully featured show in the future called Person, Place, and Thing. Hi, Michael where we talk about a person, a place, and a thing for this week in history. Hi, Michael. How are you? Okay, sorry. <laughs> That's gonna be hard. That's gonna be hard. I'm okay, Michael. Thank you for asking. We're trying to get a featured show going, so I can't really talk about the, uh, <laughs> I can't really talk to the commenters. I can't, I can't help it. <laughs> Take two. <laughs> so welcome to Person, Place, and Thing with me, Gopher. Um, we're going to talk about a person, a place, and a thing um, for this week in history. I have three different stories to share with you. <clears throat> the person is Charles Ludwig. Dodson. Ludwig. <laughs> it's hard to pronounce his name. And then the place is Applecore in London. And the thing is the commode. Hi, Uma B. Thank you. Is that how you say it? Uma B? Thank you, dear.
Thank you, Emoji J. So um, I'm Go For It, and we're doing a show called Person, Place, and Thing, where I talk about a person, a place, and a thing for this week in history. Thank you for tuning in. Um, so our first topic is a person, and we're doing Charles Ludwig Dodson. Um, and our second story is going to be about uh, Apple Core in London. It's the place. And the thing is going to be the commode. Um, so uh, we are in transition or trying to be in transition to be a featured show. So please follow the featured show rules, which is no drinking, no smoking, no cursing, and no nudity. Um, and please respect yourself, my guest everybody in the chats and um what i didn't okay um please be respectful of yourself everybody in the chats myself and my guest um while we talk about a person a place and thing this week in history um, we do have a guest this week. It is Umabi, Top Badge Umabi. Thank you so much for joining us. Everybody, make sure that you hit my guest with a favorite and myself, if you don't mind. Um, and our guest is going to provide um, insight, commentary, uh, opinions, and any other knowledge that they may have about the topic. Um, after each story is discussed. Umabi, do you want to get in the box and introduce yourself? Oh, you're already, it doesn't tell me when you said. I know, it doesn't. Hi, go for it. How are you? Hi, everybody. It's Umabi. 1111 here, Top Badge Uma B, and I'm so happy to be here to help you out with your new show. I love it. I love the idea about it. So could I ask you, you a question? What made you come up with this Absolutely. idea? Well, so I usually do this day in history, like when I'm just relaxing or on the commode, <laughs> I'll look up this day in history. And it. um and it just it, you know, I just thought it fit. And then doing a weekly show this week in history sounded like a good idea. All right. Well, I'm ready. I don't know how well I'll do with my feedback, but we'll see. We'll see where this goes. So <laughs> these like stories are pretty cool. Okay. Well, so, once, they're um, cool, once they're cool, I can rock with it. Okay. <laughs> pretty cool. So uh, I'll just jump right into it then. And I'll tell you, tell you the story of Charles Ludwig Dodson to begin with. <laughs> Um, so Charles was an English author, right? And he wrote a book turned movie that has several adaptations that we all have seen. Uh, think Johnny Depp, Tim Burton, that kind of, that kind of movie. Okay, okay. Um, he was, he was born on January 27th of 1832 to Charles Dodson and Francis Jane Ludwig. Um, so Charles' dad, he was like really, really smart. Like he could have went on to have like a really, really good academic career, but instead he chose to marry his first cousin, um, oh. Francis. And he, and then they went to live on, um, he was a, what was it called? A, a common person. It's essentially, it's where the church, um, Des designates a specific person to a small area to take care of it. So like a parsh or a farm or something small like that. Um, and Charles was the first boy, but this third born. So they had 11 kids and the first two were girls. And then it was Charles, right? Um, and he liked to tell his siblings like bedtime stories and just make up different stories with them. He would make them um, different magazines and stuff. And um, Charles, the son, the one that we're talking about, he was um, really smart too. He was reading very high advanced level books, like college level books at age seven. That's first grade age 
seven years old reading a college book that Amazing. to me that blew my mind um and the first he was homeschooled for the first little bit of his life he didn't go to school until he was 11 years old and that was a grammar school um to help him with his stammer because he had a stammer um and then in 1846 he ended up going to the rugby school which i'm assuming is like a high school i couldn't find a whole bunch of information about it where he didn't he didn't claim that he was bullied but it does seem like maybe the littler the smaller boys were bullied um because his nephew wrote and i quote even though it's hard for those who have only known him as gentle and retiring dawn to believe it it is nevertheless true that long after he left school his name was remembered as that of a boy who knew how who well who knew well how to use his fists in defense of a righteous cause the righteous cause being defending the littler the smaller boys at school um so it doesn't seemed like he was bullied but he definitely did stand up for the littler kids that were bullied um and then in 1850 he um, matriculated to the university of oxford which just essentially means he was accepted to the university of oxford uh, and then he started his residency in 1851. he had actually only been at the college for two days before he was called home because his mom passed away at the age of 47 of inflammation of the brain. So they think it could have been meningitis or something yeah. like that. Um, he graduated in 1854 with a bachelor in arts, even though like in school, he didn't apply himself. Like he didn't want to study. He was kind of bored with it, but he was brilliant. So he was able to pass everything without really studying. He only failed one exam and it was um, a scholarship exam, but he was still able to get a uh, a whole bunch of different rewards um, as far as, as like scholarships and studentships and stuff like that because he was so smart. Um, and he graduated college in 1854 with a Bachelor of Arts and he remained at the uh, Christ Church, which is the co a college. That's technically what it's called is Christ Church. So the, um, the Oxford uh, College. Um, and he wasn't really happy in, in the church, but he stayed because it was pretty much all that he knew and he stayed until, until he died. Um, and he was a sub librarian at the, uh, Christ church library. Um, and he stayed there because it was, uh, his office there was just down the road from the deanery, which is where Alice Liddell lived. Alice Liddell is a little girl. Um, her parents went to church with Charles and they became like really close friends. And then they would go on these expeditions where he would take the, like the little girls and, and a couple little boys accompanied with a parent or an, a respected adult on different expeditions where they would just go on a ship and hang out. And on one of these expeditions, July 4th of 1862, he told Alice a bedtime story. So like he outlined one of his books for her in the form of a bedtime story and she begged him to write it and turn it into a book and it took him two years to finally do it. Um, but when he did, he gave her a handwritten and illustrated uh, manuscript entitled Alice's Adventure Underground Woo! in November 1864. Is that starting Alice this in Wonderland? Yep. <laughs> Oh my God. It is this book that that started Charles on his pain, his pen name, which is Lewis Carroll. He took his unfinished manuscript to the Macmillan uh, publisher who liked it right away. And they went back and forth on the name a lot, but they eventually set, settled on Alice's Adventures in Wonderland in 1865. I did not know this. <laughs> That actually blew my mind because that's one of my favorite stories, storybooks growing up when I was growing up and not to date myself, I'm 45, but that was, that was the stuff back in the day and that's amazing. Mm -hmm. So that's the author. Wow. Yeah, that was his story. There's a lot more to him, but to try to cut all that down to five minutes is kind of hard. I yeah. do have some fun facts and tidbits. Okay. Um, so uh, Charles, remember I told you that he had a stammer? 
Um, well, he seemed a lot more aware for, aware of it than everybody else. And so the character, he characterized himself in the story as Dodo because his last name is Dodson and he had a hard time saying it. So it'd come out do, 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 Dodson. So oh. Dodo, the, yeah. So that was kind of cool. Um, so Dinah, cool. Alice's cat, the, the little girl, Alice, um, she it became a popular literary cat. And did you know that Alice isn't blonde? No, I did not. She's a brunette. See, and another Queen thing, Victoria, the, blondes, the blondes have stolen from the brunettes. I'm just putting it in my books. I have a book somewhere. <laughs> Stole Alice in Wonderland. Yeah, it's going to go right under number one. Blondes do not have more fun than brunettes, but okay, I'll put it on there. <laughs> Uh, so Queen Victoria was also a really good, uh, a really big fan. If you're just joining, um, thank you for joining. This is Person, Place, and Thing with me, Go For It. This is my guest, um, Uma B, Top Badge Uma B. Uh, we're talking about a person, place, and thing uh, for this week in history. Please remember to follow the feature show rules, which is no drinking, no cussing, no smoking, and no nudity. And also be respectful to yourself, to my guests, to the chats, and to myself, please. Um, another tidbit is, um, did you know Alice in Wonderland syndrome is a real thing? No. What is the syndrome? So it's um, the Alice in Wonderland syndrome is also known as Todd syndrome. It's a disorienting neurological condition um, that you see in people that have uh, brain tumors are heavy into drugs and migraines. So it makes you feel like your body is disproportionated. So like you may feel like your feet are teeny tiny itty bitty and the rest of your body is huge. Wow. It's a real thing. I didn't know that either. And know that. Um, the, the book Alice in Wonderland has never been, has not been out of print since 1865. So they have not stopped making copies of Alice in Wonderland since 1865. I love it because, you know, a lot of us um, like to look at the Alice in Wonderland story as a direct replica of our lives, especially those of us that have children. Yeah. 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 I, th I thought that was all really cool. Do you have any, any other fun facts or tidbits? Well, I did look it up. I was looking it up a little bit and um, I was very interested about, I don't know why, but this is how my mind works. I was very interested in knowing that he was one of 11 children and he was the eldest son and third of 11 children. I don't know why that stuck with me because I was like, because <laughs> I like to put, like, I love history and I love to put myself in people's shoes. And I'm just thinking about this poor kid in this house with, you know, 13 other people. And I could just see him. I'm a right. I'm just going to write because these people are driving me nuts. I'm going to go sit in the woods. And now we have the backdrop for Alice in Wonderland. And now, you know what I'm saying? I just was really, yep. um, yeah, I thought that was really cool. I don't have anything else in terms of, um, you know, I, I did find out with the logic and mathematics that he did work in mathematics and logic, both pure and applied. He became better known and appreciated as philosopher Martin Gardner, notably pointed out the philosophical insights hidden within the pages of the Alice books, which I did not know that there was philosophy hidden in the Alice in Wonderland books. Um, example, Humpty Dumpty is a deeper philosopher of language than Witten Geinstein. So apparently he was very, very, like you said, very knowledgeable. Uh, even though these are like to us little stories, you know, fairy tales and stories, they actually, if you read it and you had the understanding of the philosophy back then, you could see a lot of that stuff coming through. Um, yeah. He did two books on symbolic logic that helped lay the groundwork for that discipline. And 1884, he wrote Principles of Parliamentary Representation, which apparently was deemed groundbreaking back then. So it's cool because you're seeing this guy write these storybooks, right? And you're thinking, oh, he has a great active imagination. Mm -hmm. But he's so smart, he's able to write this fiction fantasy, but then he's also able to write nonfiction that actually can be considered groundbreaking work. So I, he's now like on my list of people, like when people say, if you could have a conversation with somebody, who would it be? Charles would be one of them, because I think I'd want to get into his brain. <laughs> exactly. So which... So also um, his stammer that he, he had, he shared that with almost all of his siblings. Almost all 11 of his siblings had a stammer. I think there was only one that didn't. 
So they yeah, all I, I had the uh, speech problems. Yeah, I think it's the mom and dad. They, 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 they need to stop putting all them kids out because then uh, now all the kids running around and, and the mom stammering. Because you know how it is as a mom. I'm a mom. You know, I'm trying to call the kids and I'm calling everybody. If I'm calling my son Joshua, I'm calling everybody's name. Nate, Ken, Dan, Don, Chris. What's your name, child? Joshua, come here. You know, so now the kids. I do that too. I right. do that too, but I also include that. my dog. Yeah, exactly. Call the dog. You know, the, the lady at the grocery store, Luann, my kid would be like, mom, I'm not even a girl. Luann, just go get the groceries like I told you. <laughs> that, that's what happened. It messed up all so, the kids. So the quote of the week actually um, comes from Alice in Wonderland. It's called, it's, uh, if you don't think, then you shouldn't talk which came oh. from March Hare, which is also philosophy. If, if you're not going to think about what you're going to say, then just don't talk. You probably you know? shouldn't say that on streams because we have a lot of that going around. You would end a lot of streams. If, you, if, if that was a requirement, that would end a lot of streams on here. Yeah. It'd be, it'd, it'd, it'd I, be agree. <laughs> I agree. I agree. So, out here. so um, <laughs> again, this is person, place, and thing with me. Go for it. This is my guest, Uma B. Um, we just got done talking about Charles Ludwig Dodson, who um, is also Lewis Carroll. And if you don't know who Lewis Carroll is, he wrote Alice in Wonderland. Um, and our thing is Apple Core. I was up way late studying Apple Core. Do you know what Apple Core is? No, I'm about to find out. You're going to tell me. <laughs> so Apple Core is a, uh, it's a limited multi-armed multimedia corporation that was founded in London in January 1968 by the members of the Beatles to replace their earlier company, Beatles LDT, and form a conglomerate. Um, it's actually spelled A-P-P-L-E-C-O-R-P-S-E because they couldn't uh, take Apple Core. It was already taken, but Corpse is actually pronounced Core there. So it's still Apple Core. And the reason that that's the place is because on January 30th of 1969, that is where the Beatles performed their very last live show. It was an impromptu concert from the rooftop of their uh, Apple Core building. Um, and it they only played for 42 minutes before the police arrived to tell them to turn it down you know i know <laughs> listen listen before we go further <laughs> i already know whoever these policemen are they are kicking themselves right now as being known <laughs> as those guys because you know for all of history they're those guys you know what i'm saying forevermore yep. they're those yep. guys they, they're the ones that shut the Beatles down, those guys. Okay, continue. <laughs> yep, yep, those are the ones. <laughs> so um, the concert was only announced, like, it. well, it wasn't announced, and they had only been planning it for a couple days. And um, the original intention was to kick off the Get Back uh, project, which was for them to come back onto tours, right? Because um, they had just lost, uh, who was it? Mm, McCartney. Dan yeah. McCartney had just left and that was one of his terms to come back is we're going to get back into live performing. I'm not coming back to the band unless we're going live some more. Right. And then, um, they, they went back and forth on like where they were going to do it, but eventually they decided on the rooftop because they didn't want to move all of their equipment to a different place. Like they just wanted to haul it all up to the rooftop. Um, and uh, the director of the project, the Get Back project, um, he continued to hope that the Beatles would end the season with a live performance um, in front of an audience. And according to historian Mike Lawson, it's uncertain who had the idea for the rooftop exactly. Um, a, but um, they think it was uh, suggested by uh, Paul. Paul McCartney mm -hmm. or John Lennon, one of the two. Um, yeah. And until last minute, like I said, they were still um, deciding. And John said um, in silence, F it, let's do it. So they were going back and forth. And so they decided, okay, F it, we're going to the roof. We're just going to do it on the roof. Right. Um, so 
while they were playing, um, they started around 12.30 p.m. And there was a lot of confusion among the public and um, like crowds began to congregate, right? And uh, so that's what actually drew in the police was because there was a traffic issue, there was a people issue, and they were worried because surrounding businesses were calling to complain about the noise. Um, And actually the uh, like secretaries in the building and stuff, they weren't gonna let the police by, go tell them to shut it down. Like they were trying to block them off. No, you're not going up there. And then they threatened to arrest the secretary. So they let them up there. Um, and so when they were playing, they played nine songs, five times. And at the end of it, uh, let me just find that quote. All my other stuff is highlighted. Um, so, uh, let's see. Lennon, after they had performed, Lennon had said, I'd like to say thank you on behalf of the group and ourselves, and I hope we've passed the audition. So like that was almost their audition to get back into live performance, right? And I thought, you know, the Beatles, their last performance would be on a rooftop. You know, how original is that? It would be on a rooftop, unplanned, having to call the cops in, like to break up a house party by teenagers, you know, like, like teenagers throwing a house party. It's, it's fitting. It's fitting. And I, I was reading a little um, here on Wikipedia because clearly that's where all the real knowledge is. <laughs> Wikipedia. Some of it. Yeah. yeah. Um, I, I saw this quote that was really interesting. On the founding of Apple, John Lennon commented, our accountant came up and said, we got this amount of money. Do you want to give it to the government or do something with it? So we decided to play businessmen for a bit because we've got to run our own affairs now. So we got this thing called Apple, which is going to be records, films, and electronics, which all tie up. But what was interesting, it almost feels like it was a curse because it's like all the bad things started following after Apple Core formed. Like they said, um, did you know that in the middle of setting up this new company, the manager, which by the way, name was Epstein, Epstein, uh, died. Hey, Brian that part died unexpectedly here we go and what seemed an accidental accidental sleeping pills overdose on 27 august 1967 which pressed the beatles to accelerate their plans to gain control of their own financial affairs but it was just like one thing after the other because then after that they said for the first few months of apple's existence it didn't have an office most of it the business was conducted from the Nimes building and then um, the first two years of the existence of the company was coincided by a marked worsening of the Beatles relationships that ultimately led to the breakup of the band. So it's interesting to see that that one decision that went down that one road, it just seemed to be the, the catalyst for a whole bunch of other things to come. Right. Don't, doesn't it feel that way? I'm not saying yeah. it is, but doesn't it yeah. feel that way? No, I, I agree. I think that it, it does feel that way. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, especially because it all went down so quickly. Yeah. After that. And I love the Beatles. The Beatles is like, <sighs> my dad grew up in England. So when uh, we, I was born in England and then we moved to the Caribbean. And when we were like, when I was growing up on Sundays, everybody was playing, you know, reggae music, whatever. My dad was playing the Beatles, you know, like mm-hmm. I, I grew up listening to Yellow Submarine and all this other stuff. Right. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> they, were, they were great. They were great. Yeah, and, and that's, you know, that that's just a little bit of their history, like a very small oh, yeah. portion yeah. of it. Um, so some fun facts and tidbits about this is Ringo Starr was not the original drummer right. for the Beatles. It was Pete Best, and they didn't replace Pete until they already had the record deal. So they replaced him after they were, like, ready to rock and roll, you know? Yeah. pun intended <laughs> yeah yeah uh, so the song dr robert from the album revolver was about a celebrity physician uh robert Freeman, who gave his patients b12 shots laced with amphetamines wow we, we <laughs> yeah we party <laughs> we party <laughs> I, I was born uh, in the so, wrong generation y'all <laughs> right <laughs> right the wrong generation. so the the Beatles, uh, they spent 132 weeks 
at number one on Billboard on the top 200 charts. So 132 weeks, and they're, uh, it, that's the most time that any artist has ever been on the top. The second was occupied by Garth Brooks, and it was only for 52 weeks. So they had almost triple that. Um, mm -hmm. And the group's debut album, Please Please Me, it spent 30 weeks in the number one position on the UK charts in 1963 before it was replaced with their second release with the Beatles. So they went from one to one. Wow. They, they're, and yeah. Then, uh, so impressive. Yeah. And then John Lennon's eyesight, it deteriorated so badly that he was actually legally blind. Oh, wow. Yep. Yep. You know, the glasses. Yeah. Yep. So just a quick shout out to everybody that's joined us. Thank you for joining us on Person, Place and Thing um, with me, Go For It, and my guest, Top Badge Umabi. I don't know if I'm on the right. Top Badge Umabi. You're good. You're good. <laughs> <laughs> where we talk about a person, place, and thing for this week in history. Uh, so, so far we've talked about Charles Ludwig Dodson, who wrote Alice in Wonderland, and then we talked about Apple Corps, who is, that's the place, and that's where um, the Beatles performed their last uh, live performance. So, um, the, th oh, okay, let me see. So the thing, for today is going to be the commode. So I don't know if you knew this, but the 27th of January is Thomas Crapper Day. You know what? I did not know that. <laughs> I, I, just, I just think it's something I don't need to know. <laughs> so Thomas Crapper, <laughs> he, yeah. he, he, uh, he didn't invent the toilet, but he improved the toilet, right? Okay. So um let's start with a definition of a toilet a toilet is defined as a fixture that consists of water flush bowl and a seat so if you can't flush it with water and you can't sit down it's not a toilet a hole in the ground is not a toilet um so but that really technically was the first toilets was they would dig a hole in the ground and they would do their business there and then um, around 2500 BC, uh, communities in Scotland used pipes to carry the waste from inside their dwellings to outside. So, and, and in a similar fashion, the Romans used um, sewer system deposit from the latrines into the streams and rivers. So like they would dump all their poo and their pee in the streams and the rivers. That was before we knew about bacteria right. though. Right. So now that we know ba about bacteria, we don't do that. And thank goodness for that. Um, and thankfully, these advanced waste removal systems went out of fashion in the Middle Ages um, and they'd be replaced by less dignified devices. So <laughs> the first toilet that you actually got to set down on, it was actually called a garter robe. And it was a closet that hung off of like the edge of a castle with a bench in it and a hole in it like a hole in the bench where you'd sit down, you do your business and it would just fall hopefully into the, the moat. So the water that goes around the castle. Um, and then, uh, and then it was replaced by chamber pots. And those are just bowls that people, well, rich yeah. people, royalty would keep in their room with them and then they would use it and then they'd have their chambermaids or their servants or their whatever's um empty them for them and how they do that is they would just throw it out the window of like a, a top floor like I know. <laughs> they would just toss it right out the window <laughs> <They're not. laughs> they didn't care they did not care um so the first modern flushable toilet was described in 1596 by Sir John Harrington. Um, he was an Eng English quarter and the godson to Queen Elizabeth I. Uh, Harrington's device called for a two feet deep oval bowl waterproofed with pitch resin and wax, which was fed by water through an upstairs uh, cistern, C-I-S-T-E-R-N. 
yeah. I, I listened to how to pronounce that like nine times and I still don't get it. So this contraption used seven and a half gallons of water to flush. Could you imagine your toilet, every time you flush it, it's going to use seven and a half gallons. You're like, you're like wiping out a small pond. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we don't need no fish. <laughs> Oh, shoot. And it wasn't until um, 1775 that the toilets were actually um, mass produced. So at this point, it was still only like royalty and nobility that had actual flushing toilets that weren't really that eco friendly. Um, and in the late 19th century, a plumbing mogul by the name of Thomas Crapper well, developed well. the first highly successful line of flushing toilets. Uh, Crapper's biggest innovation was the ball cock, is what it's called. It's a plug within the tank that keeps the bowl from overfilling. So that little... Yeah. That I have to change yeah, every few, ball cock. few years. Yeah. Yep. Gonna... Yep. And it's still actually a crucial part of the toilet. Like, you still have to... Like we still have them there. There's, we haven't really improved since then. And then he uh, improved the S Ben by inventing the U Ben in 1880. So the S Ben, S Ben is a trap. Um, any plumbing fixture has these S Bens or traps. And what it does is it prevents the um, foul smelling and sometimes toxic and lethal uh, gases from coming back up into your home. So what happens is the water goes down and a little bit of it is saved and it causes a plug right there in your toilet so that like none of that stuff comes back up um, because they were finding that people were getting sick and people were dying and their houses were smelling terrible um, because all of those gases would come back up into the um, house. And like it really could be lethal. Um, and so that's why we have pee traps. Every time you flush, the water goes down. And like I said, some of it doesn't go down and that forms a seal. Um, and Thomas Crapper founded um, Crapper & Co. in London. It's a plumbing equipment company. Uh, Crapper held nine patents and he was noted for the quality of his products and received several royal warrants. Which when I read Royal Warrants, I was like, he got in trouble for inventing a toilet. But no, that's just that's rewards. I oh, I, that's how I heard it. That's how I heard it. <laughs> Nasty people. They put warrants out for his arrest. <laughs> yeah, so trying to clean up the city and bring hygiene in, you know, it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. <laughs> so um, in honor of Thomas Crapper, the theme for this week in history is the crapper. I got a lot to say about this. I, I have a lot to say about this because I don't know. I'm just, I love watching movies with period pieces. Like I, I love watching like the castle. First of all, I've been to France and I've been to Versailles. Versailles is like this huge castle. Like everything is gold in the castle. There's these huge 20 foot doors made out of gold and stuff. But did you know back in the day, there was poop everywhere because they had no bathrooms they had no so people would just all these nice fine ladies walking around in their fine gowns would just pull over to the side of the staircase and just just dump a load right there on the staircase i mean i was walking these staircases like there's some nasty people nasty people all over the place but um you know i did get some facts some facts that did you know that they're the oldest toilet is still functioning about 4,000 years after it was built. The oldest toilet is in Knossos in Greece in a small castle. Oh, that's cool. So now I need to go to Knossos, Greece and sit on it because I don't know why. <laughs> I, need, I, need, I need to know that. Did you know that there is a World Toilet Organization? It was founded on 19th of November, 2001. And on this day, every year, World Toilet Day is celebrated. So my apologies to anybody whose birthday is November 19th. <laughs> you share your birthday with World Toilet Day. I hope you are not. My little brother's is November 19th. <laughs> well, now you can tell him. I'm going to call him. <laughs> that is. Um, do you know in China, oh. there are public toilets for dogs? 
Yes, they're a public. Oh, that's company. awesome. Very awesome in China. And um, well, I just have to throw this in there because, you know, COVID and all rigorous washing of hands with soap for about 15, 20 seconds is recommended for killing harmful germs. However, only 5% of people wash their hands for 15 seconds or more. So when I see all of you at playlist or streamer link ups, do not be offended when I refuse to touch you and I just wave at you from a distance. <laughs> from a distance. Yeah, from distance. Welcome to Person, Place, and Thing, um, where we talk about a person, place, and thing this week in history. I'm your host, Go For It, and this is my guest, Umavi, uh, Top Batch Umavi. Uh, we just talked about um, Charles Dodson, we talked about Applecore, and now we're on to the commode. Um, so, some Fun facts that I have for you is um, the British term loo, you know, like I'm going to the loo, um, comes from the French phrase regardez loo, obviously with a French accent, um, meaning watch out for water. Servants would shout this before dumping the chamber pots to a, like out the window, remember they just toss yep. it all out the window. Mm -hmm. They would just shout the regardez uh, loo to to warn them like hey i'm dumping this out so watch out below nope. uh so sir john harrington's invention of the first flush toilet is uh that's what brought the using the john wow the and job. then um so the remember the p traps we were talking about um they catch heavy objects so you know how like stuff ran like inevitably will fall into the toilet your watch your earrings all sorts of stuff you could potentially save that in the trap i don't see why you'd want to wear it again but you could save it <laughs> so you know, it's not then, a goner yeah back then like a, like a piece of metal was important to people right because they were poor and you know so yeah if you if you had your wedding ring go down, like you need that because you could you could sell that you could by grain for <laughs> they don't need to know they don't need to know where it was oh oh i do have a random fact mm -hmm. what 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 do you find in superman's bathroom what super bowl let's go <laughs> eagles. let's go eagles that's all i had to say about that <laughs> let's go eagles i don't i don't watch a lot of uh sports i don't really watch a lot of tv um so i don't really have anything else other than some honorable mentions i do want to um say welcome to person place and thing again um we are trying to become a featured show we discuss a person a place and a thing for this week in history um please follow the featured show rules no smoking, no drinking, no nudity, and no cussing. And please be respectful to yourself, the chats, my admins, my guests, and myself as well. Um, the person that gifts the most during the stream will actually get to pick next week's topics. Ooh. And I happen to be the top gifter. Look at that. <laughs> so somebody else overtakes me. I happen to be the top gifter. So let's see, people, because I will pick... A lot of crazy stuff. <laughs> yeah, so I'm excited. I want to. I want to see what you pick. I mean, it, technically, Jay, so, if somebody wanted to get banned on the app, they just got to come on here naked, smoking a cigarette, cursing, and uh, what else? Drinking. It, it'll, it's a one way <laughs> to never, never land. <laughs> All at the same time. Yeah. Right. Oh, uh, so some honorable mentions. I'm just going to do Tuesday to Monday. So I'm going to do something for each day of the week. Um, Tuesday, the 31st of 1953, the great storm strikes the Netherlands in England and Belgium. That was actually a really fatal storm that killed a lot of people. Um, Wednesday, the 25th in 1933, the new hourly wage was set to 35 cents an hour. They hate us on this planet. They just hate us, but go ahead. <laughs> 35 cents. Um, <laughs> and Tuesday, the 26th of 1998, Bill Clinton appeared on American television and denied having sexual relations with, with former housewife intern Monica Lewinsky. No, ma'am, it was with that woman. We don't know who the woman is, but with that woman. <laughs> 
That's all. I did not have sexual but relations with that woman. that woman. That's right. Let's get it right. Don't don't, don't lie. Don't lie on my bill. No. <laughs> He, until Obama, he was the closest thing we had to a colored person in, in the White House. So we, 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 we <laughs> he we was very him. colorful. <laughs> yeah. like, like Friday, fried chicken, the 20. Friday. <laughs> I like fried chicken too. Yeah. He, <laughs> and he played jazz. It was good. Good, good days. <laughs> <laughs> Friday, the 27th of 1926, uh, John Lowe. Bear gave the first public demonstration of a television system in London. 1926. So the television has only been around for not even 100 years yet. And it has caused so much drama in all of our lives. It must be. I agree. I, I mean, this might be factual. It must be an instrument of Satan. <laughs> it could be. It could be. I cannot imagine. freaking John. <laughs> I, uh, Jay, I think it's, old, it's not even a hundred years old, and it has broken up marriages. It has made women uh, liberal. Like you know, you know what I'm saying. Like, come on. Not only that, that, but I, I feel like it's also taken away a lot of women's and men's identity and given them a higher than achievable body image. You know yeah. what I mean? I have to tell you, I saw a BBL in real life and, and that, that stuff belongs on TV. That is not, it's like a cartoon in real life. Have you ever, have you seen a BBL in real life? It's not, it's, it's made for TV. It's not made for real life. So we, we need to stop watching all this stuff on TV and thinking that that's what, what it, it is. It's not, it's not. I think it's more important to love ourselves, you know, and then that way, no matter what you're doing, no matter who you're talking to, you're going to be great because you know that you're also a great, beautiful person. And it doesn't matter what anybody else looks like. That part. But if we keep having these TVs out here, you know, the work of Satan telling us to look the like this, like Satan. It, right? That we, we never gonna love ourselves. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Jenny, please cancel <laughs> that trip. <laughs> I'm messing with y'all. This is not a religious Saturday, show. Saturday, the 28th on 1986, the space shuttle Challenger exploded just after liftoff. So that's the one that had the teacher on it. Yeah, and I think it was nine funny. other passengers. Um, so Saturday, the 28th. Yeah, definitely. Um, Sunday, the 29th, uh, 1959, Disney releases the animated film Sleeping Beauty to theaters. 1959. That was before my mama was born. That was before I was born, and I'm old as dirt on here. That's crazy. <laughs> my mom was born in 65. Um, and then Monday, the 30th, oh, we already did that one with the um, performance on the roof. So we, Monday, don't get an honorable mention because it's Monday. Right. We don't yeah. do honorable mentions for Mondays. <laughs> yeah, we just, you know, we have a personal vendetta with Monday, so. <laughs> yeah, I actually, I, I do well with Mondays. It's Tuesdays. No, I just like Mondays because I was having a great time on Saturday, a great time on Sunday, and then here comes Monday. You know, like you always got that one friend, you know, everybody's having a good time, and then you have that one friend, when are we going home? You know, and then like all you have to do is just like pull your money together to get her a Uber home because she just ruined the vibe. Right, right. That's Monday. Could we all pull our money together to get Monday like a vacay or something so we could just keep keep the weekend going? I'm just saying, asking for a friend. Right, but but then would it be Tuesday that would be a terrible day? No, I think after three days of partying, I think we're ready for Tuesday. And then Tuesday, like to me, Tuesday is a female and she has a different attitude than Monday. Monday seems to be like an angry um, Wall Street type person. You know, and Tuesday <laughs> seems to be like like a hippie chick, you know, and she's just kind of like, I'm sorry, guys. You know, here's some hashish, kumbaya. Yeah. <laughs> so um, right now we're going to do final thoughts and um, we'll talk about next week's topics. Um, I'm not sure, like, if you want to take a minute to research or I can come up with a list. Um, okay. For the top gifters to pick the next week's topics, I would be happy to do that. Just get with me after the show. 
Um, does anybody in the chats have any comments on our person, place, or thing for this week in history? I mean, I already no, have. Casey a... does. Casey has lots of topic or lots of ideas. I mean, for next week, I was thinking it's it's too soon for Valentine's Day, but Groundhog Day. That That's a good one. Groundhog Day, and then um, maybe the creator of Valentine's Day, whoever created Valentine's Day, Saint Valentine. Saint Valentine, supposedly, allegedly. <laughs> allegedly. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> allegedly, indubitably. Indubitably, <laughs> you learn something every day. Yeah, you guys. For those of you that are listening in. Please hit her with a fave. This is a great show. I think this is going to be great as a featured show because you learn. You're learning things. It has great content. So I love the work that you're doing. Yeah. I try really hard to keep the topics light, but history is history. You know, I, I can't change it. I can't keep everything light because otherwise it wouldn't be history. You know, Correct. history can be very dark. History can be very disturbing. Um, that doesn't mean that that's how it is now. You know, we've come a long ways, um, just as people just with humanity. Um, so what, what we think now would be disgusting and terrible and awful back then was normal. It was right. just how it was, you know? Um, so it, it's, it's hard to pick those light, uh, the really light topics just because there is, so much dark it's almost overshadowing the light fun topics like alice in wonderland you know like you don't get much lighter than that i honestly a lot of people have told me alice in wonderland was um based on drugs right so right. reading this i was like no it wasn't it was a bedtime story that char charles told his or yeah charles told his friend on an expedition that's how alice in wonderland came to be that part. Helter that's true. Skelter I like that inspired because... Charles Manson to do what he did. That's true, Casey. Helter Skelter did inspire Charles Man Manson to do what he did. And that's another Beatles song. That's wild. Yeah. I think and you that's did a, a part of history. Of yeah, because you managed to keep it light and then heavy, light and heavy, you know? So I think if you do have a heavy topic, just make sure that maybe the other two or at least one is light. Yeah. yeah, so like, so it's in the middle. Yeah. So yeah. Moody, if we're the top, um, the top three gifters get to pick the topics for next week. I think that Umabi picked uh, Groundhog Day. Mm -hmm. Groundhog Day. So we're going to do uh, Groundhog Day. Thank you for that favorite. Mm -hmm. um, and then if any, I don't know if anybody, any other gifters are here, but if you are, um, and you have a topic you'd like me to research and discuss on here, I would be happy Try to Moody. happy to do that. Try it, Moody. And if you need guests, you know, the Lotus Lounge family, we have over 30 members and we have a lot of interesting Yay. intellectual types like me. I'm happy to send them your way. Just, you know, reach out to me on IG, tell me when you need somebody and we can have you with a guest. Absolutely. Yeah, that's awesome. So yeah, Emoji J is kind of taken over my admin and, and that helps me a lot. Um, why don't you tell me about your show? All right. Yeah. So I have uh, shows every day, but my featured stream is on Wednesdays at 4 p.m. Eastern. It's called Uma's Lotus Lounge. It's a metaphysical experience. So I'm a CEO of a metaphysical center in real life, <laughs> not stream life. So I use that show to kind of showcase what I do. So we start with like a meditation. We do affirmations. Um, we have a metaphysical talk on a topic and then I bring in a guest. I'd love for you to be a guest. Basically, I just ask you about your streaming life. Um, I ask you about your shows and then I ask you uh, something about a theme. So like right now for February, we're featuring all uh, black streamers and we're asking them about, you know, their experience of being black in America in this day and age. And just um, we're, we're focusing on that. But if you uh, hit me up now for March, because March is Women's History Month. So I'll be focusing on all the females in the room and about that. Uh, Moody, Moody, no. I see destruction. <laughs> Pain and destruction, Moody. <laughs> oh. So um, I want to talk about my stream a little bit, too. Um, so 
and it kind of goes along with what you do in a roundabout way. I, uh, I actually started my own nonprofit organization, like off of streaming. I, my stream has helped me a lot with ideas and brainstorming and whatnot and who have you. Um, but it's called hashtag SOS. I can't really talk a lot about it because there are trigger words, uh, okay. but it's, it's success over, um, issues like people struggling with life, um, mental health, uh, addiction. What I do is I make little boxes and I fill them with items that help with coping. And so mm. you've heard of the grounding techniques for your senses, right? Five, four, three, two, one. Yes. I include something for every single one of those. Um, so they can do that grounding technique. And then I've got like fidget spinners, color pencils, coloring books, um, lights, because um, the top of the box lights up when you turn the light on and it says you matter, you're valued and you're loved. And then I donate these boxes to different groups and organizations. Um, we did the police station, we're doing fire stations, hospitals, uh, our LGBTQ community, we're doing um, rehab centers, homeless shelters. We, we donate to a lot of different places. This month we did 50 boxes. I'm definitely, uh, I, I have to find you an IG or well, I, I found you an IG because I have um, somebody in my family, her name is Tender174. She's actually a mental health therapist and she is open to going, great. To, people's, yeah, to going to people's streams and doing talks. She does amazing talks. So I'll send her your way and uh, maybe she can come and do a show one time with you. That'd be Definitely. great. I would really like that. I really, I really would. Um, so yeah, if you guys are interested in hearing more about my cause, go ahead and add my Instagram. We're actually doing a delivery today, um, a donation today, and I'll be recording that and posting it live on Instagram. Love that. I appreciate the work you do, sis. Keep doing a great job. And um, thank I you for having the work you do. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, thank you so much for coming. And thank you everybody for joining us on Person, Place, and Thing, where we talk about a person, place, and thing um, this week in history. Um, I'm not sure about the topics for next week, um, other than Groundhog's Day. We'll be talking about Groundhog's Day and I'll either make it fit with a person, place, or thing um, for next week in history. Tuesdays at 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time is when I do my show every week and you're all welcome. Um, if you haven't already, please hit me with that favorite um, and come back next week so that we can talk about more this week in history.